All right. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Arjun Krishna. Uh, I'm the former captain of uh, Team 334, the Tech Knights out of Brooklyn, New York. I'm joined here with uh, Etienne Desbians, uh, captain of uh, 5859, and uh, Arun Bishop, um, captain of 1155, the Cyborgs, out of Bronx, New York. And, uh, wow, this, uh, this year's game is definitely not what we... Uh, uh, I speculated about. Uh, we I, personally, I thought it was going to be capture the flag. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah but it was definitely not even remotely close. So uh, we're gonna watch the. the uh, we're gonna put on the game video right now, um, and then we'll uh, we'll get down to uh, taking a look at it and its different aspects. So let's see. Okay, wait a minute. Having a little bit of yeah. I guess I guess the video isn't showing up. No. All right. All right. No worries. Yeah. Well, anyone? We've all seen it. So yeah. 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 yeah well, That's everyone should have seen it. Hopefully, everyone's seen it. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway. Anyway, so um, getting back to the game, there are a lot of different aspects to this game. Uh, with the defense pieces, the the boulders, the uh, the tower and hanging at the end. Um, so robots are going to have to do a lot of different um, types of things if uh, if they want to be uh, selected to go on to the finals, I would think. So uh, so what what were your uh, first impressions after uh, after the uh, game reveal about with your teams? Well, I was glad to see that they uh, decided to do a defensive and offensive game with a bit more interaction between the two sides. But I think a lot of us were blown away at first by uh, how complex the game appeared to be. I think as we analyzed it more, it started to break down, but it was that was kind of the first reaction for a lot of the team members. Just like, wow, this is going to take a lot of strategy and a lot of the oh, yeah. strong design to, to perform well. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, I see, like, it's... It was just awesome. I mean, everyone I was watching the the stream went were just blown away by by the animation. It's way better than last year, I think. Oh yeah, um, definitely. Because Disney's so many now, right? Yeah. All right. Well, they um, found the whole kickoff thing with the Monty yeah, they, Python hilarious. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, Monty Python references. Uh. Yeah, I mean, we, we noticed now uh, bumpers are back, so, you know, you might see a lot of... Um, I would think that some people who would want to play defense on... Um, uh, th this year, they, they might go with something like a two-speed transmission or, or, or something uh, that can push other robots. And uh, the interesting thing that I... That, um, that they did was only one robot is allowed to defend uh, when... Yeah. Yeah, well, when you only one robot's allowed to defend at any given time, right? Um, so that that's going to be complicated. Wh whoever's on defense needs to have a really fast yet unmovable robot if they want to, or if they want to push other robots away so they can't score or something like that. I mean, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna need to have a strong transmission in order to push other robots around. Um, and yeah, also, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> so I think we're, and, uh, I think we're definitely going to need a very versatile 
drivetrain or to conquer many of the obstacles. Because one of the things about the game is in order to score points, you, you have to be able to cross those defenses. Yeah, um, Other than so that, we're just, yeah, I mean, you, you need something with a suspension or, or, so, or big wheels that are able to go over things like uh, the, the one of the obstacles where it's just like a bunch of uh, tiny, like, squares. Um, that that's going to be really really rough on uh, your standard uh, West Coast drivetrain. I mean, uh, you're you're probably going to need um, some sort of or, or some sort of um, uh, I don't know, maybe even treads to uh, to go across those things without having your your robot like bounce too much uh, when you do so. And uh, also, one thing that I noticed was. Um, uh, you can so when they when they place the uh, the defense um, uh, the defense pieces so one the one that stays the same the whole time and we were talking about this today uh, um, I was talking about this today with my team we were all talking about it how the one piece that's fixed uh, to the field the one that doesn't change is uh, the low bar the one foot uh, low bar uh, that that's actually fixed to the field, so no one can tamper with that, and I feel like teams this year are either going to disregard it completely or take advantage of it, um, so to avoid uh, uh, screwing with their autonomous code or something like that. Yeah. So. I think we're, we're probably going to see a lot of low robots, at least a lot of robots with low centers of mass, because... Most of the obstacles are, I, mean, I kind of made a list of them and classify them into three types. Ones you have to go over, ones you have to lift up, and ones you have to open. There's only one you have to open, the satellite port. And most of them are ones you have to go over, and that means that you're going to need a low center of mass so you don't tip over and fall. It's going to be right. interesting to see what happens uh, what's happening. Yeah, and uh, also, what was it? Uh, so the third, the one in the middle... Is the one that gets chosen by the audience this time. So that was a bit that was a bit interesting. Um, how they're involving uh, uh, the spectators in, in the uh, in the matches, and I, I think forget whether I read it or, or I heard it from a teammate, but um, it, it's uh, it's done by applause or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just by noise, yeah. It's definitely going to make strategy so, a lot more. Uh, yeah, I mean that that means that means you're gonna have to have your team, like you know, gather up and like try and sway how <laughs> yeah. how the defense. Yeah, a lot of team like, here. Yeah, it's gonna be. I mean, I don't know how are they even gonna measure that. Yeah, like I mean, what like happens if, if one team breaks well, the bullhorn? And... <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I don't even know how how they're gonna how they're gonna do that. I mean, if, if you have two team two if you have two sides like uh, like that are equally as loud, how are you gonna like how are you even gonna differentiate? Because people are loud at these events, right? Yeah. So like, I, I, feel, I don't know if they're because I feel like you could end up with biasing there. Because if there are well-known teams, you know, they might they might get the advantage from the crown for the crowd, and then home teams as well might get advantage from the crowd. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that works out and whether it has an effect. I mean, it's only one of the defenses, and there's only two choices. Yeah. So, but right. I do find it interesting how they decide which category it is. They're just doing like a regular circular system. There's no. Uh, it's complete. It starts off randomly, and it's just. Yeah, they said there there are over a uh, thousand combinations, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, also, so that's the third. That's the one in the middle. That's uh, the third one that gets picked by the audience, and then the rest, uh, the player, the teams pick. So there's gonna be there's definitely gonna be a lot of strategy uh, involved in in how. Um, uh, well, choosing which and where. Yeah, yeah, depending on other robots and their abilities, um, and their abilities to cross those defenses. So. 
So uh, one thing that's going to be interesting is that the um, the robots that I'm sure people will build robots to climb the the tower, but how they right. get those robots to the tower is going to be very interesting, considering uh, the the defenses they'll have to cross, and that there's no guarantee that they'll get one of the lift defenses. Yeah. Right, so. and you need yeah, and and you need to. Um, Deplete. So you need to like kill the tower because the tower has a uh, like health, like the the light, yeah. uh, the light. Eight. So you need to score eight of them. Yeah. yeah, and and then once that's zero, then you can climb onto the platform and then uh, then hang from the from the uh, tower. So first you need to be able to score eight of them. Which, yeah, and, which means you need to be be able to traverse the field well. And we, there's only 18 balls, which means you're going to need to be able to get access to them. And there's, there's not very many. You only start off with three your, with your loading station, so you can't use your loading station that much unless the other team's really good because it's the only way you're going to get balls. Hopefully <laughs> that's not the case, right? So yeah, I think possession, possession is definitely going to be a really, really major part of the game, just keeping balls away from the other side and keeping control over them. And you can only control one at once, so... But I yeah, think, I found that I found that interesting too. You know. I think that the defenses will be a really big part of the scoring for each team. Since yeah. there's a rule that prevents you from being touched when you're crossing one, and it grants points. It grants points for you know the the ranking system. It's pretty valuable. Yeah, and also the, the uh, technical fouls increase the strength of your tower. So that, that's yeah. a huge Yeah, deal. yeah that, that, that's, 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 deal. <laughs> that's nice, right? Yeah, if because, I mean, if, if, like... if, they, if they get a technical foul, and it probably won't happen that often, but if they do, it's, it's going to make it incredibly hard for them to, to get a lot of the points, like capture and... Um, right, especially like if they waste all the boulders. You have access. Yeah, I mean, if they if they get a technical foul and they waste all the boulders, and that their the enemy's tower gains like uh, health, you're going to you you won't be able to hang, right? Right. Yeah. So so that you know that kind of that can impede your whole end game. But one I think technical foul won't just yeah. I mean that can. I think that hanging is not worth that much since. You know, as you said earlier, you need to cross defenses with your big mechanism, and it's only 15 points. Yeah, but, but that's... You... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's actually not that much. It's funny how yeah, they're but doing... Points. Doesn't it determine your qualification? Yeah, but it, you, you get... Not uh, hanging. As long as, as long as you're on that platform... As long as you're on that platform, as long as all three robots are on the uh, oh, right, and platform. Oh, right, you capture it, right. You're right, right, you're right, yeah. But I think the teams that are going to do well are the ones that are probably going to be able to shoot and hang. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't imagine robots in the final eight um, not being able to hang unless they were picked specifically to open up all the traps. I'm sure you're going to have robots that are just like... Um, you're you're gonna have you're gonna have robots that are just specifically made to like open up the traps for other robots and let them through, uh, rather than shooting or hanging. Um, yeah. So you might get those as like your third pick when it comes down to uh, uh, final yeah the, the alliance selection. So you're gonna have those, and then you're gonna have uh, robots that are just all around like they can do they can cross over. Uh, they can they can intake boulders from the field and from the human player. Um, they can uh, what should we call it? And they can hang. So you, I think those when you have those robots, I think those those are the ones that are going to be leading the alliance selections when you get to the final eight. It's not going to be some some robot that uh, that only opens up traps. I, well, I don't think. Right? Traps are still worth fifty points plus. Points for the ranking, or 20 points if you unlock four of them during the finals, which is 70 points in total. I think it's That's really true. worth it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. 
Yeah, and there are a lot of yeah, there are a lot of points to be made just opening up traps. You're right. Yeah. So I'm looking actually through the manual. Do you need to weaken the tower to scale it? I know you need it to capture yeah. the tower, but do you need it to scale it? I would to think so, right? Points. Yeah, you need it. it yeah. I'm pretty sure it says it. Because it only says a robot has scaled the tower if at the conclusion of the match the robot is in contact with a unique rung and has all its bumpers above, fully above the height of the low goals. The tower is captured if the tower is weakened. But I think you can still get points for scaling without weakening the tower. Without having to totally weaken the tower. So you still have access to the end game. Oh, so so if you do, if you do, then what we were talking about before, right? Uh, say someone gets a technical foul um, and they get a technical foul and the other uh, team uh, gains uh, health in their tower, then um, they won't get that qualification point, right? Because they won't be able to uh, take the tower down. They can't. Yeah, they won't be able to take the tower down, so they lose that qualification point. Um, but they they can still gain some game points by uh, and try to win the, by scaling. Try to still win and get those two points for winning. Right, yeah. uh, but it still affects your ranking, though, right? Those qualification points. Yeah. Uh, so that's very important. So teams are going to have to uh, figure out a way to uh, maximize um, their their qualification points uh, in every match. Uh, yeah. Also, so what's uh, what 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 do you guys think of the uh, the human player, the spy? Um, do you think that's going to like? It's pretty. My... Uh, go no, for no, it. No, no, it's okay. I think that. Adding a camera to the robot would be much more useful than using a spy. I mean, since the human players, there's any... You can put one there at any time without losing any points or... You know, there should be one there at any time. It can help by helping you for, I don't know, targeting the, the goals or... Mm. But yeah, the only problem is you can't really do both. Because you can only shoot from the courtyard, right, which is pretty close to the goal, which means you'll have to angle your camera up, and if, you're angry, if your camera's angled up, you won't be able to see much on the field. Because that's the thing about this game. There's so many obstacles in the way. It's going to be really hard to see the other side of the field and to get possession of the balls in the courtyard. So it's the, the easiest place to get possession would probably be in, in the neutral zone. Because when you're in the opposing uh, the opponent's courtyard, you're, you're not going to be able to see much at all. Right. But, you know, the quality on those webcams is very, very low. Like, <laughs> you know, because of the bandwidth limits on the uh, right. Yeah. On the field. Yeah. So, so how are uh, I guess is the spy allowed to have some sort of like walkie-talkie or like is it just gonna? I'm it's, sure teams are. I guess it has to be hand symbols. So, so you can't have some sort of uh, walkie talkies. No. Some sort of like that's so. All right. Well, so what I'm trying to think, like, what would that even be helpful? What? What? Just telling the other team what where the robots are like trying to position themselves, or like how would that even? Um, yeah, and helping line up might might be good. Yeah. Helping you line up to the ball. That, 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 that is true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know in um, 2014, uh, in Aerial Assist, uh, our human player uh, coordinated with our drivers to help them line up correctly before they uh, shot, and then he would do like a hand signal saying to shoot when they were at the correct uh, distance. So I guess that would be um, the more practical use of it, I guess, of the human player called the spy. Um how, however, I mean, I, I don't know, other than that, I don't know if uh, it'd have a practical use um, other than to signal uh, the robot to fire or not. So. Yeah, I think, I think that's what they really just added it for because of the visibility problems. They gave it as an option in order for us to, uh, if we can figure out a creative way of using it. Right. Also, the, the spy bot... I feel like it's not that useful since um, 
you have to you can't shoot balls from the neutral zone into the um, the courtyard of your opponent. You actually have to carry them over. So it's not like you can pass to a robot waiting there. You you have to be able to carry. Them. Yeah, but you're allowed. Are robots so robots uh, are allowed to start with one inside of them already, mm -hmm. right? They're they're allowed to start with one boulder inside of them. Uh, yeah. Does that include the spy bot? No. No. No, right? Okay, that's what I thought. So, yeah. So I I mean I don't know unless they wanted to like push around the red ro like the the other robots like at the beginning of the match. I mean I I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the advantage to that would be. You're trying to score. Oh, I, I know, I, I know what, I know why they would do that. Say that robot is a trap opening robot. Um, oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. So if you place your tra tra like on your alliance, if you tr if you place your trap opening robot in the spy in the spy zone, uh, you can start the match and have that robot just start opening up the gates for your other alliance members to come through, right? Right. So that can so while while you do that, your other the other two robots can uh, since they're already preloaded with um, the uh, the two boulders. If you in autonomous, if you have your uh, spy robot maybe open up the gate or something like that, and have the other robots drive through and score, that that's there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, that that would make a lot of sense because it would be very difficult to program. And you'd have to have a perfect alliance. So yeah. I, I, I would. It would be really cool to see that happen. I feel like it's kind of unlikely. But you, it, even it's if the, oh, the robot only opens the trap, like during tele you can get them through because then you can carry two balls through. So you take the tower down by a quarter of its strength, and you completely weaken that defense and finish it off in kind of one swift, one, two, three sort of blow, which would be right. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you could have that robot open up the gate and then. Um, once everyone scores, everyone can that robot can open up the door again, and those other and like close it, right? So, I so there may be you know a good use for that if it's used correctly with the right robot. Um, I wouldn't put a robot that can shoot there uh, at the beginning of the match because that'd be kind of a waste, right? Yeah. You'd probably want a robot that can shoot um, to start in the the uh, neutral zone with one boulder and then cross over in order to score an autonomous. I mean, speaking of uh, autonomous, it's going to be much harder to program because the field is so dynamic. Right. Because the yeah. thing is, so, like, when you're ready to do an autonomous, right, you don't know what obstacle your robot's going to have to pass. No. You'll so, know before starting the autonomous. You'll know, like while setting up your robots. So you can have multiple autonomous modes that you switch. Yeah, you use that's, what, that. that's what you're going to have to do. Because for each, so, you probably target like a certain type of obstacle, and then you'd have to specify it. Because we find out one match before, we, and we get about two minutes to, uh, to strategize. Right. So that, that leads me to my next point. Um, being... Uh, so the field is dynamic, yes. You have the audience picking slot three, and then the other, t and then then you have both teams, you know, uh, picking the defenses, right? So it's all going to be randomized, except for the the low bar, uh, True. the one foot low bar. That is going to be static for every single game. Mm -hmm. So the teams that the teams that take advantage of that. Are gonna gonna be, I mean, the, they're they're gonna have easy autonomous codes because they can just go through the, they can depend on that. That's always gonna be there. They don't need to code an autonomous to go over like the the bridge. You know, yeah. you can just go right like, if you have if your robot fits, you can just have it go right through the the low bar. The only problem with that is it's kind of like the loading stations from last year. There's only one low bar. Like there were two loading stations last year. So, you know, if all three robots on your, on your alliance are built to only do that, you're going to have a problem. So I feel like truly sure. relying on getting the low robot. I mean, you should definitely build for it if, if that's, that's, that's the way you're going for a low robot. But relying on getting it every single tie, time is probably not that good. Because another thing you can rely on based off the way the categories are made is you're always going to get 
one of the um, low to the ground ones that you have to traverse, you'll always get either the moat, ramparts, rock wall, or rough terrain. Right. So, which is, then those all can be made similarly because they're all ones that you're going to need to use a drivetrain or some sort of system to get over. So, right. you can also so, rely on that. Bro. I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just thinking individually. Like, teams won't need to to write like five different autonomous codes. Um, uh, what should we call it? To traverse the uh, uh, different obstacles. I don't even. How would you even? Um, how would you even do that? Like, I guess you'd have to set up the robot in front of the one that you'd want to cross, ideally, and then you'd act. You'd use that specific. Um, you would use that specific uh, uh, autonomous code uh, to go over, rather than just going under the Low bar. bar. But yeah, I mean, it depends. I, I mean, it might just be simpler to roll through if your robot has the uh, size, but. Um, if your robot, you know, if, if you want to completely disregard that in order to, because with with going through the low bar, I mean, your robot needs to be a foot tall, like mm, less yeah. than, you know, it's it's going to be like one of the soccer bots from uh, 2010. Like that's yeah. how how low it's it's going to have to be. So, I mean, if you if you're willing to design for that, then go for it, because then you have another option available to you during gameplay instead of going over the obstacles. But, um, yeah, I mean, that, that just opens up more, op uh, more options. But if you choose to ignore that, then, you know, your robot can be a bit taller and you can, you know, have a solid shooting mechanism that doesn't need to telescope out of the flat chassis, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's oh, yeah. where we were... That's where I think we're, I mean, I think if we have a very strong program department, it would be good to program multiple routines and try to figure out, like, one of the things I was thinking about is um, instead of tra traversing some of the obstacles, might be kind of tough. So if you can automate that process, that would probably be help you out a lot. If you can, like, use one of the sides to align and then uh, automate the rest of the process of getting across, that would probably help a lot. Yeah. Right. So uh, as for um, as for uh, drivetrains, I know we talked about this, but um, did you guys? So what what were you guys talking about um, with uh, your respective teams, or or just ideas that you had on uh, how the robots could traverse these different uh, obstacles? Because there's the one with the ramp that's uh, that's pretty high that you need to like push down in order to uh, cross, and then you have the the blocks in the middle um, that will do that, that might do some damage to your drivetrain if it's not built correctly. Uh, you have all these things that are that are, that move, so you need a robot that that can grab and that can uh, uh, pull up like the the gate and whatnot. Um, so, did you guys? What were you guys thinking uh, in regards to drivetrains? Uh, I this think year? that tank trains are a solution to a lot of the a lot of the problems. Um, in this challenge, I mean, rock wall. Uh, what are the? Uh, damn, what's the name? The moat, ramparts. All of those small things that you need to cross, and when you don't need to push or pull something, I think that you can easily cross them with a tank tread drive train. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually I agree. Um, it, it, uh, that ability to climb over um, that does does that that would reduce a bit of mobility. Um, but I mean, they're tank treads, so you'd be able to you would you would be able to turn in place, um, and uh, that would enable you to uh, if you use tank treads. That would enable you to uh, uh, play defense if you needed to, because um, yeah. no one you're no one's gonna push tank treads. There is no mm -hmm. way a robot's gonna be able to push um, a t tank tread that is grounded on that carpet, especially if the tank treads like rubber. You're mm -hmm. not pushing that. No matter what transmission you have, you're not gonna be able to push that because you have a solid piece of 
rubber that's just on the ground uh, with the whole weight of the robot on both sides. So you're not going to push that. It's not like it's wheels. So and you that would actually eliminate the need for a two-speed transmission if you didn't go with uh, tank treads. Cause that solves your uh, traction problem right there. No robot's going to be able to push you around if you do use tra- if you use uh, tank treads. I mean, I think it's the the only other thing that might be well, actually, I don't think. Uh, definitely Mechanum and Omni are out because this is such traversing those obstacles with Mechanum, and, uh, Mechanum wheels or Omni wheels Swerve. Holonomic drive is going to be very very difficult Swerve, some some teams might try it I mean personally I won't just because I have, we've never, never done it before and I don't want to dedicate the resources to a Swerve drive because those are very hard to set up but it will be interesting to see if anyone does use Swerve because yeah, swerve, swerve I don't know is if, uh, hard to code, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't know if there's any way to use swerve to help you get over the obstacles because you can change the orientation of the wheels. You could like kind of push slash uh, drive over. But you know, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what people do in terms of that. I mean, so swerve, you have all four wheels being. Uh, Actuated and able to turn 360 in place, right? I'm just trying to think that one obstacle with the uh, with all the blocks on uh, on the uh, on the ground. Um, you guys know what yeah. I'm talking about, right? The, yeah, the yeah. blocks. Uh, the something with, with like, yeah, swerve drive is not gonna. I feel like that's gonna not not be able to um, traverse that properly. No. They'll just get. I mean, them. swerve. Yeah, you need. I mean, you need something with big wheels or treads if you want to traverse that without your robot, you know, suffering, um, one, like, from bouncing. Or, yeah. I mean, one other Go thing ahead. that my team was talking about, just as a suggestion, is I think a while back, the Cyborgs, like, way before I was on the team, I think back in 2010, um, Cyborgs created a robot where, the, where the, each, the, each set of wheels, uh, front, middle, and back, could be adjusted to different heights, and okay. I think they were just like two, two different heights. But using that or some some system of uh, adjust to angling the wheels or treads to to help get over all those obstacles. Right. Yeah. And then also, so, and as yeah, go go ahead. For the uh, for the drawbridge and the port, I'm not even trying to pronounce that. The, the two things that you have to lift. Or, or up or down, you could probably oh, the if, you, if you design if you design your uh, the mechanism you use to pull up on the tower creatively, you could probably use the same mechanism like they did in the video to to uh, open those. Yeah. Mhm. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have um, something that can telescope up, that can be used to open up the uh, the the gate as well. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if, if you had something um, like a, a piston with a really long stroke, or or you can use a linear actuator, um, uh, that would that would be able to do both tasks without having to design uh, separate mechanisms uh, to dedicated mechanisms to open up like that trap. Um, when teams design their robots this year, they're going to have to be smart about. Um, what they put on the robot and how many things that part can do on the field. The parts made for this year are going to have to be able to do multiple things. Oh, yeah. Um, like, definitely, you don't want to have five different mechanisms on your robot for each different... I mean, you, you could do that, but I, that, that would be Wouldn't very... Be you know, it would be very inefficient. That would be hard to code. And that's subject to many different failures if one of them is uh, knocked out or something like that. You want a, a sleek design um, that's able to do multiple things. You want to combine uh, like the hanging with opening up the uh, the gate and uh, opening up doors and lowering ramps or and stuff like that. I think last year was all about you know building big and really using the capabilities they gave us. You know, with the unlimited space once the game has started. That was really right. important for last year. But this year, it's almost the opposite. You really have to think about being small, having a low center of mass, because if you actually look at the categories, it's possible for an alliance to give you uh, defenses that are all ones that you have to traverse over. So if you build a robot 
that has to be able to climb the tower and is really tall and has this huge linear actuator and a very high center of mass. And then yeah. the other alliance gives you these three overs, you're not going to be able to use it because you might tip over trying to go over the uh, defenses. So getting a low center yeah, of mass yeah. is going to be huge. And trying to figure out how to minimize and make very, very small the, the mechanisms you use to get up that tower. Because I think you have to go up what? Uh, what is, what's, what's the height? The rungs are six feet, four yeah. inches above yeah. the carpet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then also the angle of the uh, of the the batter section is going to be right. Yeah, just, it's it's at a small incline too. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that that plays into strategy. I mean, if robots uh, in the final competitions or even in the um, uh, preliminary uh, rounds. You're gonna have teams that uh, set up the traps accordingly. Um, you know, they might be like, "Oh, you know, that that's a top-heavy robot. Let's see if we can tip it, right? Let's see if we can get it to fall down under its own uh, uh, misplaced center of gravity." So, if you design a tall robot, you got to make sure you have a low. Somehow, you got to make sure your center of gravity um, stays towards the chassis end of the uh, robot. Um, Especially if you're going through the ramps or through the the, the very bumpy uh, terrain, you you can't afford to tip over. This this game definitely lends itself to really careful planning and very careful strategy. Because I know my my team intends to do scouting in a way so that we can very quickly determine we we see the three three teams we're going against. We know what obstacles they can and cannot handle, and that's how we like talk to our alliance about which obstacles to, to pick and so we, I know that's going to be really really important this year and making sure you have all that information and you have a way of analyzing it and quickly making snap decisions in the two minutes you get uh, right. to, to do all the strategies. Gonna yeah. be important. I mean uh, there, there's going to be there are going to be robots um, that are able to the robots that figure out how to do everything how to um, how to shoot, how to hang, how to go under the low um, the low bar and traverse every single uh, what should we call it? every single defense. Those are the robots that are going to go. Yeah, th those are the robots that are going to go to uh, St. Louis. Uh, mm -hmm. The ones that can adapt in different um, positions on uh, their alliance if need be. Uh, those are the robots that are going to win. Um, you also have robots that will. Be, yeah. The only defense that I don't think is going to matter that much is the Sally Port. Because that's the yeah. one defense that is it's kind of its own thing. It's going to be very hard to make a mechanism that, that can do that as well as other things because it's, it's a sideways action. You know, you've got to, you, can, you can hold it open for another robot, but holding it open for yourself is going to be really, really difficult, especially with a tank drive, like getting around. So that, yeah, you're, you're going to need something to... To hold that open, that that's gonna be, well, that's for uh, teams so to figure like, out. You could honestly, like I, I'm gonna talk about with my team about it tomorrow, but you can honestly even ignore that one because the thing is that if you look at the categories, you can almost guarantee that even if you don't have something that'll open the sally port, if you have something that can lift and you have a way of getting over the rough terrain, rock wall, moat, and ramparts and the Cheval de Frise, or whatever, however you pronounce that, um, you yeah. will be able to, to get four out of the five of those, and that's all you need. I mean, the fifth right. adds extra points, but as long as if you get those four out of five, that's going to be incredibly helpful. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, teams are going to have to make those decisions, uh, especially in regards to shooting ball, because that does take up space, depending on how you uh, uh, design it, uh, if you design your intake and... Uh, and your shooting mechanism uh, to be over one foot ish, um, you're not going to be able to go underneath the low bar, and uh, you're. I mean, you're going to have to spend resources to make up for the fact that you can't go under the low bar. So you're going to have to be able to open up more defenses um, uh, in order to gain back those points. Uh, if yeah. you're not doing, the low bar. so you're going to want to do the other. Uh, the other defense uh, pieces if you're not doing that. If you're doing all five, then great. But, um, yeah, I guess I guess teams, especially rookie teams, uh, maybe just focus on, um, uh, like, four that you can definitely do 
and do them well, and then that that will be in uh, that can get you in finals easily, uh, either picked or even be the one picking. Um, as long as you're good at something, you'll make it to the finals. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, I think we're probably going to be seeing a lot of wide robots and long ones. I mean, they did give us a good the the max the the minimum length that you have to traverse is. Uh, I mean, the, the minimum length between the defenses is three feet six inches, so people are probably going to be using that to their benefits, and also making long ones so that it's easier to traverse the uh, the terrain. That's because the the platforms are only two feet wide, so if you can get over it easily, and you yeah. can get one wheel on one side and one wheel on the other, it's going to be much easier to get across than if your if your if your wheels are closer together. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we were discussing was, um, so you got points for crossing over the uh, defense, but can you can you back up and get no. points now? Different points. You can yeah. back right. up. Right. It's useless. I mean, you could back up and then go again to get points again. Yeah. But I mean, you're gonna have to. You you always have to. Uh, go back, but the thing is that you're, you're not going to get points in the, in the process of going back, and actually it's interesting because going across is really clearly defined in the manual, and they say yeah. that you need to make it clear to the referees. Like, if they can't tell that you went across, they are supposed to assume that you didn't, and clear that, that you made it across. So right. there's, there's no... Uh, so you really do have to do the full thing. You can't really go back and forth very quickly. Right, right. And plus the defense is closed yeah. after a certain amount of time. Um, uh, when you go through them a certain amount of times, the uh, the defenses, they close. So, uh, you know, you have to make sure um, you, you figure out uh, uh, how much, you know, t because you're, you only have so many boulders to, uh, uh, what should we call it? to score, right? So you need to figure out how many defenses you can go through before they close in order to transport those boulders uh, to the other side in order to score them. Uh, and that will affect your end game because, oh, well, you can still... No, 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 that affects your qualification points. My, my, my uh, apologies. That, so that will affect your, uh, affect your qualification points if you, um, if you don't kill all the health in the tower, right? Because that means you can't claim the tower. So you yeah. can't go up in ranking. So. And, and I think it's... Um, I mean, you can still win and get points that way, but I think that the best teams are going to be able to get those eight balls across and do the defenses at the same time. Because you, you have four defenses, you have to cross each of them twice. So if you cross each time you get the, eight, the one of the balls across, you're going to be able to knock down pretty much two birds and one stone. So really right. good teams are going to be able to do that. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think obviously uh, having two other teams help a lot. Yeah. Uh, so Etienne, you had uh, some sort of diagram uh, you showed me. Uh, what was what was the point? Oh, we also have uh, oh Noah just joined. Hey Noah, uh, this is Noah from uh, Team Six Ninety Four, Stipoles, former captain. Good to see you. Glad you can make it. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, we were just discussing um, uh, what you would call it, going through the uh, defenses and uh, scoring. So uh, uh, yeah, Etienne, what what were the, what was the uh, diagram that you had about uh, scoring? Well, um, put in it. It's an unfinished scoring diagram I'm working on, but. Can you zoom in on that? Wait, yes. Um. Yeah, so uh, why don't you explain that? Well, yeah, it's like just difference. to show that. I'm just doing a diagram to show each way of scoring to make it more visual, and I think that we tend to forget, to forget some ways when we plan strategy. I mean, crossing yeah. barricades and stuff might be forgotten with certain teams or climbing or so. I mean, yeah. I think it's yeah. it's really important to like 
point out the fact, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but once you pat, cross the defense twice and you've you've damaged it, there's no um, just you don't get more points. Yep. Yeah, it's, it it becomes pretty much useless. Yeah. So you really want to be able to spread yourself out among these the defenses if you want to rack up the points and make sure that your everything you do is worthwhile. I think. Yeah, I, think I mean that's. that's, that's yeah. Uh, I was gonna say like I think I think but thinking in that vein I think a lot of teams are, might forget the fact that you can't do everything, right? And I think that's going to be one of the major problems that teams face this year. They're going to be like, oh, we're going to tackle all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten traps, like yeah, let's do it. And I'm uh, gonna fail at a lot of them, um, in my opinion, because it's it, it is too easy to try to, to spread yourself too thin. And it's something that my team has done in the past, where we've been like, all right, let's try to do, let's try to make ourselves the most versatile robot. And instead of being a jack of all trades, master of none, we were crap at all trades and definitely not a master of any. Right. Yeah. And I think that I think that when this will play a really large role when you're doing um, a line selections. You just choose robots whose drivetrain will have mechanisms who are complementary to uh, the traps that you can uh, that you can surpass. Mm -hmm. Yeah I think it's definitely just focus on them one by one, like really because some some of the terrains are, are similar the, the moat and the uh, rock wall can be thought of uh, similarly. So if you can really just focus on the ones that are similar and build something that can do those two things very well, like for example, getting over the uh, the ramparts and the what was the other one that had the the uh, what was it the cheval de frise the the um, teeter totter pretty much. Those will also be similar. So if you can figure out how to use one mechanism to do both, and just do those, but really do them really well, that would probably be, work out very well for your team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, rookie teams might want to focus on uh, just four or five different tasks um, instead of uh, trying to tackle everything. Um, and that, I mean, again, going under the, the low bar limits your um, your height. Your robot's going to need to be uh, really advanced and able to collapse and limbo underneath the uh, the bar. Um, but if you have a robot that, that just completely disregards it, um, that's perfectly fine. If you can just traverse the other obstacles, you'll... Um, you might have that might allow you to build a really really nice uh, shooter uh, to track and score the the boulders when you when you cross. So and then you won't even need uh, to worry about um, uh, going underneath the uh, the uh, what should we call it the bar the limbo bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I, mean, I think so, it would Noah, be good. So what? Oh, you yeah, go go ahead. I think it would be good to aim at being able to uh, take on at least a ro take on a robot that can do at least two of the defenses, if not three. No matter what the no matter what the categories are, because you can make a prediction on the on the sort of defenses that you'll have to deal with, even though you can't narrow it down perfectly. Yeah. So that that'll help a lot. Yeah. Uh, Noah, so what what uh, drivetrain were you guys thinking of uh, to traverse the? Uh... So funny thing, I actually was not at my team's kickoff uh, this year, unfortunately. Uh, I had to teach a class, um, so it. So I don't I don't know what my team is planning. No, there's um, signal problems. <laughs> yeah, your mic is uh is a bit grainy, but uh, you think you can use your computer's mic? Yeah, I'm totally trying to do me sorry. Um, right. it, the problem is that I have I have a combo I have like a combo jack in in my uh, new computer, so it's like it's weird. It has like, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, anyway, so I don't I don't know uh, what my team is doing, but I think that from personally just going by the, this 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 game really favors like really short. Uh, robots with high 
Well, not necessarily. Um, but it, it's helpful to have um, a low, a slower robot simply because a lot of traps have like a height thing to it. Um, and in addition to a robot with a very high clearance, uh, definitely not a mechano wheel game. That's for sure. Um, yeah, we're, we're just talking about that. That they might be obsolete. I can see use of them. Um, in certain instances, but you're definitely not going to need them uh, to score or to position yourselves in front of the yeah. defenses, really. Um, but uh, teams will find a way to use them if they need them. But but uh, you, you're not going to need them for regular. I mean, if you're just going bare bones with a six wheel with a uh, six wheel chassis, um, you're not going to need them. There's no. There's absolutely no point in using yeah. mechanisms. Uh, with, with, or the, with, the six wheel, with the six-wheel uh, drop center, you're, you're definitely going to be fine. Um, yeah. You're going to need big wheels, though. In order to traverse those obstacles, if you're going with a... If you are going with a six-wheel uh, chassis, you're going to want to use, like, six-inch or eight-inch wheels uh, in order yeah. to get over the bumps. That's going to take a lot of your space on your robot. Yeah. That's yeah. That'd be interesting. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious to see... If teams are, if they're going to be teams who try to drive quickly, like who have teams who have really uh, high-speed drive trains, really and just like fly across the yeah yeah. See, if you're going to go fast, you need a really low center of gravity, so you don't you're not top heavy and you don't tip over. So well, here's the thing: if you have if you have a very uh, fast drive train, uh, you could just. And you would uh, compensate for that by not going through any of the uh, hazard, uh, the bump traps, and you could just go th oh, go through the uh, the low wall. Uh, the low right. Bar. Yeah. 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 The low bar. The, the low bar. bar. Right. Because because it's just a flap, right? So you could just zoom right through that, and because it it right before that is the um, the place where you roll the balls and that with terminology. Yeah. Like you could just zoom. You can go straight across, and you're gonna have like a one in, a one inch bump, uh, but that's rather small. You can pretty easily compensate for that with just good driver practice. Um, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see. I don't. I don't know. Um, the, I'm just. I'm just kind of trying to think of like the merits of defense in this game, and it seems that due to the high, due to the fact that you can get like at least 40 points from simply, you know, knocking down all the opponent's goals. And then just rolling up the tiny ramp, uh, it might it, like the, the defense in this game seems to be, would be very advantageous because that's like a good at least at least um, forty, if not seventy, points if everyone can climb. Unlikely in regional competition when championships definitely going to be there. Um, so I'm just, but the uh, and you only have uh, two low goals and. Uh, three high goals, and there's definitely going to be robots, uh, especially at the, uh, the uh, regional levels, where uh, they simply can't do high goals, and you're going to have lots of interference with low goals constantly just bumping into each other, so uh, that's going to be interesting to see, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the communication between the alliances is going to be really, the teams is going to be really important for each alliance. Oh, yeah. I like this, the large selections in this game, I think, are definitely, like, it's like considering considering that it's really hard to build a robot that can go through all the traps like completely, um, and you're gonna want robots that all can at least like two can climb because that's a that's 15 points a pop. Um, alliance I, uh, alliance is probably gonna be key in getting the in getting your ranking score up because it's one ranking point if you can breach all the four mm -hmm. five traps. So that's definitely something there. Question: Does anyone know how many balls, like how many boulders you can hold per robot? I one. One. You can only use one at a time. You you can only. only control yeah. One. yeah. Yeah. You can't hold. You can't hold more than one. Um, which is very interesting. So you can't like you know stock up on boulders and go on the other side and shoot like five of them into the thing. That's not gonna. It's not gonna work. You have to transport them one by one. That's so that's taking, it's gonna be interesting. Taking down those tower. The uh, the tower is gonna be very challenging. Yeah, I think it's going to be that challenge that people are going to underestimate. But you have to like, get eight balls across in two minutes, and you have to go through the defenses. And you can only carry one at a time. And getting possession is going to be hard, too, of the balls, because right. you only have three to feed. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm just you, you really can't. Really All right. Sorry, can you? 
No, I think that was, uh, I clicked on uh, at the end. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, I was, uh, when I, at first I was looking at the all time because there was um, there's uh, each Eastern line gets three balls in addition to the uh, like six in the middle, six or eight in the middle, six in the middle, and then three at the end. And I'm just like, there is no way that I seem to get all of them because that's a heck of a lot of points, uh, and there's really no way to be able to get all of them. And I'm, I'm also really really concerned about being able to cross the fences and all time. That just seems really no. Yeah, that that's why that's why I'm suggesting um, teams that teams that take advantage of the low bar since it's very since it's fixed, uh, you can have the same Auton run uh, every single match because it's not gonna change. That's the only part of the field that doesn't change, you know? Yeah. So you can just continuously but you have to design for it. You know, your robot needs to be compact and underneath and under a foot. So everything needs to be, be able to fold into the chassis, which is going to be hard for people to design. So that's a trade-off that needs to be discussed uh, going into the build season. I mean, you, you, got, you either have to go with a tall robot that can go through the other four or a compact robot that can that is able to also go through the low rung and that might also help with your Auton code if you're able to do so. Yeah. I think it's it's very hard to figure out what to focus on because doing everything is going to be very hard for most teams. Only the most experienced teams are going to be able to hit every single part, and even then it's going to be sketchy. So figuring out what to focus on is, is a challenge. Honestly, I've, I've been leaning towards focusing on the defenses. But... Um, yeah, only one robot can defend at any given time, correct? So, I mean, that, they, that's going to be... You can't defend the, the defenses. You can't defend the defenses, which is annoying. You can't block the path through a defense. Yeah. Yes. Defending is only going to be really useful when you get to, um, to, 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 to eliminations, because that's where things start only mattering. Like, that's where, like... Uh, in 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 quals, you want to you want to get. I mean, yeah, in quals, you want to get those ranking points as soon as possible. And the best way to do that is by breaching or capturing a tower, and you, that's really hard to like come like you do with defense at the same time. So the thing is, if you, even if you get those 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 points, they're very important during playoff. You need to make sure that mm -hmm. that you can also get enough during the playoffs to uh, to really rank mm -hmm. everything up. So that's gonna be hard. I wish I wish the I wish the uh, the defenses had like markers on them so teams would have would be like four two sensors basically. I don't know. I feel like that's a really kind of a big missed opportunity there. I don't know. That makes me sad. Oh, there is a moment. Yeah, so I know the castle. Yeah, yeah, I know the castle actually has uh, reflective tape, so your your robot can uh, track it if you have some sort of. Yeah, I mean, your robot, uh, if it uses vision tracking, it will be able to um, track the, the goal on top. So I guess teams that use some sort of rotating turret or something like that, uh, to shoot the ball, they should be able to do that no problem um, once they cross over with the boulder. So initially we all thought that they that they didn't have it, but uh, that would just be evil <laughs> if they didn't put any tracking on because the... They, they didn't mention it in the game video, but it, it is there. They mentioned it yeah, the yeah. I, I think that like having teams that ha having if you can figure out how to uh, switch your auto mode without having to edit the code, that, that's going to help you a lot. Oh, which is alternatively, I don't know. I, 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 when what's the process between like the audience, the audience choosing the thing, and is so, it, is, so yeah. in. The third position, the middle position, is uh, that's the slot that the audience gets to pick. They get to pick which defense goes in that slot. And that is determined by applause. But when is it determined? Uh, um, one match before. One match. See, th see, then, uh, see then that's, that's really easy. Like, in terms of dealing... If you have specific mechanisms that you know you can, uh, specific tri uh, defenses that you can work with, you know beforehand exactly where auton code to load. So I feel like 
like in, in, in and of itself, having that third slot makes it a lot easier. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you're only gonna have you're only going to have two minutes before you get on the field, and at, during playoffs, you're gonna use those two minutes of doing strategy. You have to get on the field at the same time. You only have two minutes to do strategy and get on the field. But so, pre, yeah. like pre, like pre, pre, uh, that pre during, during the um, uh, like the practice day or even before if, if teams are prepared, you can make a specific auton code for a certain defense, right? And then fine tune it, yeah. and then that will allow you to, to have a really big, a really huge advantage, basically. Because if the audience all of a sudden chooses this one defense that you just so happen to be that, that you just so happen to be able to work with, you have an auto code that uh, no one else. That yeah, really I mean, that that leads me to think because you have you might have some teams like the teams that have like a hundred plus members. There, I mean, they can literally sway the game if oh they. Gosh. Yeah. They, you know, coordinate and say, and like, especially with like, what if they're paired up with two other teams that have like a hundred members, right? Oh man, you're guaranteed that third slot, whatever you want, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, like as interesting as that audience thing is, it's. I feel like it is going to hurt the teams that are small, like or Etienne. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And so you're gonna need to rally some support, man. Or uh, uh, someone who brings a bullhorn or brings speakers and just broadcasts clapping. Hey, people in buttons. That's actually a good idea. Like buttons. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just wondering, like, what if you brought, like, a megaphone? Yeah. <laughs> like, to, uh, I feel like that would, that would be, like, a foul somehow. It'd be, like, yeah, I mean... I wouldn't be surprised if a team uh, if if, uh, if an, uh, there was an update to the manual prohibiting that. I would not be surprised. Yes, yeah, I mean, at first I thought they would choose it. All right, they're probably gonna have every team like download an app and like vote right before the match. But no, it's like it's like with applause. So, I mean, that's kind of subjective. That's a really good idea. Finals, everyone's gonna be. Good idea. I mean, it is yeah, good I mean, if you get to finals, though. everyone's gonna be. It is good for Verse, though, because at least it engages the audience a bit more. I think that's what they're trying to do. That's the goal. You oh, know, yeah, of the course. The audience has a little control, yeah, over what's going on. And hopefully it won't have that big of an effect on uh, on the playoffs. But, you know, like, if, for example, if it's a home team that most of the audience knows is a home team, you know, that, that might sway things. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and whether you can use it to your advantage. Yeah. Oh, you know, strategies probably, it could also be used to like promote gracious professionalism or like socializing with other teams, maybe. Right? Like if you have if you have like a whole bunch of teams you're friendly with, all of a sudden, bam, huge, huge boost. Yeah. Like if you make deals with teams, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, like cheer for this one and hopefully, you know, we'll set this defense up this way so that this robot can do this, you know? Like, like remember so, remember how they wanted to do the noodle agreement last year? Oh my god! Noodle? There, there might be like a... <laughs> what do you mean? What, what's the noodle agreement? What was so the noodle year, agreement? So last year, um, you know how with the litter, if yeah. it gets on the field, it counts for points for the opposite team. Uh huh. So in the beginning, the litter wasn't marked. So if you just dropped it on your field, it would go to the other team, and you can get like forty points or something, some ridiculously high amount through that. Right. So yeah. the, the agreement would be that both alliances would agree to just drop all their litter on their field. <laughs> so first had to revise their their manual wow. so that the noodles had blue and red tape on it to to right them yeah to, to okay yeah that's, that's that why, okay uh, I was wondering why so, okay all right I never so I, I never feel like would, a team okay. like signed an agreement this year like we're gonna tell you what 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 thing to cheer for the most you know. If they band yeah, together, no, it's gonna be interesting. I can picture, I can picture like all these billboards, like cheer for, like, like to go across the bleachers that are on the other side of the field, like you know, to alliance members that aren't seated with you. You're gonna have to. Mm -hmm. it, it opens up a whole, and in fact, it opens up a whole new dimension to strategy because you you have to coordinate with more than just the drive team, the lead strategist, and the coach. You have to be able to say, you know, like, all right, have your team. Uh, do this, and like you have to have two. Everyone needs to come together at the right time and cheer for the right thing 
and cheer louder than the other teams that are doing the same thing. But you know what's convenient? You know what's what? convenient is the fact that you know the category. That the minute they, you know the category at the very beginning. Yeah. After the first qualifier, you know the category for all of the matches from then on out. So you can tell them at the beginning of the day, okay, for each category, this is what you're doing. And then you don't need to communicate with them anymore because when it comes to category, let's say, C, they know to go for the drawbridge. Or when it comes to category D, they know to go for the rock wall. Because the thing right. is, it's not like they're doing it randomly every match. The, the first one's random. Like, but if it's B, they're just doing B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A. Or if it's D, they're just they're going through it almost alphabetically. They're not they're not randomizing it every match. So you could really right. just use that because you know where you're gonna get. Yeah. All right. So uh, does anyone have anything to add? I I think we should probably start wrapping this up. Uh, it's been a good hour of uh, discussion. Um, does that Anyone have anything to uh, to add to the stream? Yeah. Please, all teams have a strategy division this time. Like, yeah. it's very important all the time. <laughs> but I know there are teams who don't do strategy. Please do strategy. Scouting is important. Please scout. Please, please analyze the game. Please pay attention. Oh, man. Yes, okay. Strategy, good. Yeah. All right. That's all right. Uh, Etienne, do you have anything to add? Yeah, well, one thing, uh, the balls are really expensive. They're like $30. <laughs> How much are they? For a foam ball, right? Yeah, they always do that to us. Like, like a little foam ball is worth so much. You can buy a chassis with that. Oh, man. Wait, how much is it? <laughs> it's 35 Canadian dollars, so it's probably around 30 U.S. Wow. Because, like, we wanted to buy, like, a decent amount so that we could have at least a partial test field going on, but that's ridiculous. Oh, no, it's really expensive. 30 bucks for a foam ball. Man. I mean, that's I wonder if you can find a substitute, but that's, that's wow. This is just, People are going to figure it out. Just reminds me it's, of facts. God. I mean, we wanted to build a nice test field for this year, but after seeing the field, I, I realized it's going to be a lot more difficult. <laughs> like, yeah. practically yeah. impossible. Like, for example, the rough terrain... As far as I'm aware, none of my members know how to spot weld uh, steel. So like, oh, my team, my team has a spot welder. We've never used it before. It's really oh, interesting. Now, now you got your chance, right? Yeah, learning opportunities right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. I will stop welder and do it. All right, all right, guys. Uh, um, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the plug here. Uh, good discussion. Uh, thank you all for uh tuning in and uh. Definitely uh, leave a like. Once this uh, video is uploaded to uh, uh, FRC Captain's Roundtable, um, our YouTube page, it should be uploaded right after, uh, shortly after um, uh, the stream is cut off, but definitely leave a like, a comment, uh, share it around. Um, and definitely uh, like our uh, Facebook page. Uh, it's the same name, FRC Captain's Roundtable. We'll be posting uh, links to live streams and... Uh, uh, more related content. So, uh, you know, just uh, watch out for any more uh, updates, and we should be doing a bit more, uh, uh, some more streams in the near future, and uh, we'll keep you posted. So, uh, in the future, we'll get to involve some more captains and start really opening up the discussion. So, maybe we can do QA, yeah. stuff like that. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you at the uh, competition. All right. See ya.